Okay, Leo Loki is in the game now in Fairy Tale Fist Fight. So let's take a look at his kit. I know he's a bit of fan favorite, so a lot of you guys are probably very excited about him. But let's see whether this game actually does him justice and how good is actually his kit. So if we take a look at his kit, so actually first thing, he is a versatile unit with light elemental coverage okay so that basically makes him identical to loxus so if you are ultimately deciding what character to summon on do pay attention to this um because normally you want to concentrate on just a few characters of each element rather than try to go all in in one element and that, that makes you difficult to break other shields so for me personally i can tell you up front even though leo is very good i'm definitely going to skip on him because i already have luxus who is light coverage with uh, versatility so exact same typing as leo the only difference is that like one is magical one is physical but that literally makes no difference because that only changed the gears and the energy stuff um but like in terms of the, what situation would you use them for it's exactly the same and even if i'm have trouble breaking light shield i have my jello as well who have half his kit as light so i really don't have any trouble with light anymore so for me leo is really really low on priority even though he's a good character he's really low on priority purely because I already have really good light characters. So that's just personally my situation. It may be different for you. So, you know, let's still take a look at his kit so you have an understanding of how he works, etc. Now, all of his skills, well, actually, no, his whole gameplay is centered on just one particular skill, which is his skill two. Um, and basically, that gives him something called the Mightiest Release, which is going to give him crit hit for by 30%, and also immunity to stun, fear, and sleep for 15 seconds. This is a really long duration. Uh, it's not all of the controls, by the way, because there are still the likes of uh, Petrify and Imprison, which this one is not immune to, but it is immune to, like, you know, let's say half of the control effect. It's also for 15 seconds, which is very long. Now, one massive downside you can probably see from this is that it's cooldown 60 seconds, which obviously means that you will only use this at one time in the whole battle but don't worry too much about this because later on when we talk about his passive you will then be able to see he's actually able to extend the duration of this mightiest release buff so actually you wouldn't really have any problem with this vast majority of the time okay so don't worry too much about this but just bear in mind like pretty much all of his kit is based around this skill like nothing else in his skills even often much outside of it like you can see it's a pretty much just a straight damage this one have a bit of stun which is quite nice 2.5 seconds as well which is actually a really long time so that is nice and then this one have control immunity for 1.2 seconds which sounds good on paper but you have to bear in mind whenever he has the mightiest release status he's already immune to half of the uh half of the control effect and that's for 15 seconds and you can pretty much extend this indefinitely as well so actually the incremental value from this control immunity for 1.2 seconds is not actually that massive so that's just something to bear in mind so if you actually take a look at his kit it's pretty much he has one massive buff effect and the others are pretty much just mostly straight damage with that one stun but that's basically how it works now if we actually take a look at all of his animation attacks etc uh what you will notice is that so first of all let's start with skill t which is normally the skill you will release first and then once you do that you then see okay you have this which is for however many seconds long right okay it has a shield which lasts for 25 seconds, which sounds like amazing on paper. But for me, I think this is useless because scaling is really low. Uh, it's only block damage equal to 1350 plus 107% of physical attack. If you just take a look at any of his attack, right? His, any of a normal skill attack is already like 200% scaling. So actually, your shield it's only able to block like one skill damage so i don't even know what they say 25 seconds you can literally just block one hit or maybe like two normal attack assuming normal attack is like 100 percent scaling basically your shield can either save you from one skill attack or two normal attack and that's it right so this shield to me is almost like non-existent uh but anyway you always start off with skill two then if we check out his skill one what he does is some short range hit and then a slight push back towards end not much like it doesn't create much distance actually no you move with the enemy as well so both you and the enemy will push forward slightly so if we do this right both you and the enemy kind of move slightly 
Then if we take a look at skill three, start off with some short range attack. Then once again, a bit of a pushback and also the stun, of course, let's do it here. You short range attack, then push back the enemy slightly, okay? Uh, the very annoying thing here, uh, let me do skills four as well. Once again, he start off with some short range attack, then push the enemy back, okay? All of them, basically all of his offensive attack, always start off with some short range, then followed by a bit of a push. And that's really annoying because the normal attack is short range. So basically what you see is that if I do four, uh, skill four, push them away, I can't hit them anymore with any of my hits. So I have to actually like move forward in front or use maybe use skill one because eventually that will create a bit of a gap just in, in order to hit them. So I don't really like the design of this kind of attack because it's just a bit awkward where you try to push the enemy away when all of your other attacks start off short range. It just feels a bit stupid. For example, if I do this, right? Skill four, knock them back, try to hit skill one, doesn't land until the very last hit. So it's just a bit stupid in my opinion. Uh, same thing with like skill three. Let me see what they can connect on skill three. I mean, it's just about, I guess. I guess skill three, the push is not massive. So you can just about still hit. Actually, no, you can't. So it's like, depends. I think like skill three, sometimes you are then able to connect with normal attack, sometimes you're not. Maybe it just depends on where you stand. But yeah, it's just a bit annoying. Uh, not a great fan of this kind of mechanics on short range character where they actually push the enemy far out. It's just not very user friendly. Um, but yeah, so that's all of his attack. The other thing I will also mention is that his attack have really long animation, which it's actually somewhat problematic, uh, and I'll talk about why later on it's a bit problematic. Uh, but for example, if you take a look at skill 4, it's a bit annoying. And also, if we take a look at auto, now that we're in, uh, skill 2 first, then skill 3, then skill 4, then skill 1 at the end, I believe. Yeah, then skill 1 at the end. Is that a good order? Uh, man, blah. Okay, not the best order. I was in the best order you want to skill, start off with skill one first, and once again, I'll talk about why. But it's not the end of the world, to be honest. It's okay because you are starting off with stun, so at least you are able to stun the enemy who, uh, before they can launch into their massive attack. So it's actually okay that you start off with skill three. But ideally, I would prefer for skill one to be landed first. And the reason is very simple. The reason is because when uh, Leo use any of his other attacks, he basically have the potential to reset the duration of this Mightiest release. And remember, this Mightiest release has 15 seconds, uh, which is a very long time. Uh, within those 15 seconds, if you use any of the other three skills, you are then able to extend it and reset it back to 15 seconds. So that's very, very nice. And the reason why I say you ideally want to use skill one first is because skill one has the shortest cooldown. Skill one cooldown is only 12 seconds. And this is a very, very nice design because this basically means that by default, in theory, you should be able to extend your uh, Mightiest release indefinitely because before your 15 second countdown finish, you are guaranteed to be able to have skill one back in your disposal. Okay, so that is like very much ideal. The only problem where this could fail is that if the enemy happened to control you for the last few seconds. So basically, this is a full 15 second interval. I just have a 12 second cooldown. So basically there's like a three second margin where you can afford to not use the skill straight away. If the enemy for whatever reason managed to control you for those three seconds, that's gonna be very annoying um, because then you actually miss out on your opportunity to actually reset or extend your buff. So that's gonna be annoying. And the other annoying thing which could also happen is when you actually play on auto, this is the other thing, which is why I said ideally I want skill one to be used before skill four. Um, because what's going to happen is that when you use skill four, there's a really, really long animation. So, and because the enemy is then pushed away, you don't have to walk up to the enemy in order to then use skill one. So actually, it may take you a few seconds just to walk up to the enemy, depending on how far they have been pushed. And therefore, you may not actually line up your cooldown perfect. Oh, no. Wait, let me, let me just think about it a bit more. No, 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 sorry. Ignore me. Ignore me. Uh, I think the order is fine. Um, the reason why the order is fine is because when he used skill four, he should have already activated and reset the cooldown already. Okay, so my bad, ignore me. Uh, this this is 
makes no difference. His attack order makes no difference. The definite by default because his skill one is shorter than the interval of his buff. So by default, you should always always be able to extend your debuff indefinitely. Actually, let me try one more. Let me try skill two. Just see whether there's any lagging in skill two animation. If I use skill two, how many seconds do I have? Thirteen point four seconds. So yeah, so that's enough. Even after all of the animation finish on skill two, you still have thirteen point four second, which then is enough for you to then use your skill one because skill one only have twelve second cooldown. So provided you are never too far away from enemy, uh, then you are actually okay. Even if you're too far away from the enemy because your own skill pushed them back, that's okay as well because you should have already reset and extended your buff with your skill that meant to push the enemy away. So that's still fun. So yeah, so in theory, vast majority of the time. Leo should be okay to extend his buff status indefinitely. The only problem is gonna be if the enemy just happen to push you away or manage to control you within those three second gap, and you're not able to get up close to the enemy in time, you know, to do that. So that could be the only scenario where you actually miss out. So potentially, if you do want to counter uh, Leo in PvP or whatever, the best character to use will be someone probably like uh, Brain, who's able to like push back the enemy like quite far, or maybe like Luxus, who's also able to push back the enemy. Those could potentially be problematic for Leo in case you can't connect in time for his buff. But otherwise, I think Leo would be fine, even if you put Leo in auto. because he will just be using this as soon as it's available. Or if this is not available, he will be using other skills. By default, you would never have more than 12 second gap uh, between your skills, and therefore you should always be able to extend this. So Leo is going to be okay in PvP, in P contest when played by bot as well. And that's going to be pretty important. All right, and then now let's take a look at his leadership skill. Uh, all allies will gain enhanced light attack at start of battle. Um, I mean, the skill itself is not the greatest purely because it's uh, it's only for one particular element, right? But if you do you consider the fact that uh, who else are light in this game? There's Jalal with half of his kit being light and also Luxus. You have some pretty OP characters in the light faction. So actually, even though this is fairly restrictive, uh, it's a good chance that some of the best characters are going to be light. So uh, in comparison, maybe you still see some use of it. Even though I would argue if you're bringing Luxus in your team, Luxus should be the leader because Luxus leadership skill, increasing attacking speed is going to be so much more useful than Leo's one. So yeah, so that's that's probably going to be my take on his leader skill. Then if we take a look at his Eta Nano passive, so that's the one you get when you have him at six star. Basically, it's just more buffs. He is going to get more buff when. Uh, Depending on how long he maintain his uh, status, if he already have it for fifteen seconds, he's going to get increased defense. If he has it for twenty five seconds, he's going to get increased crit damage. And if he has it forty seconds, this is absolutely insane. He's going to get increased attacking speed and all of the basic attack reduce skill cooldown. So that's going to be insane. You can basically like recycle all of your skills with like every three or four basic that, which is crazy because this one only twelve second cooldown anyway. But if each one Reduce it by eight one point eight second. Four basic attack probably take like four second by itself. Then you reduce it by four times one point eight, so that's like seven point two. And you already have your skill ready to go straight away. So this is actually going to be very insane. But it is only going to be dependent on if you can just survive for forty seconds. And that is probably going to be the biggest downside I see for Loki, uh, for for Leo, um. Because basically, if you actually look at his stats, he's actually a bit fragile. He's a similar, very similar stats to Luxus, I believe. And if we even take a look at Ikaruga, Ikaruga has higher base defense stats than Leo. So that kind of just shows you how fragile Leo is. So normally, from my experience in PVE, I think you're going to be fine because PVE, uh, unless you're facing up against the boss, otherwise other enemies don't actually do too much to you. But in PVP. From my experience with Luxus, who's actually in you know, a five star, really highly trained, Luxus dies very, very quickly when you are face to face against another DPS. Uh, normally, what tend to happen is that after one round of all of the skills, my Luxus is already like down to only like twenty or thirty percent HP. So normally, 
I have a feeling it's going to be a bit of a struggle for Leo to even stay alive for 15 seconds uh, in order to actually benefit from this increased defense. And assuming you're actually going head to head with the enemy for the first 15 seconds, by the time you actually get this buff, your HP is probably going to going to be so low already that this defense is not going to help you anymore so that is going to be my main concern for leo however this is only for pvp where the bot controls for you if you are actually in pve or any other game modes uh like the normal pvp version where you can actually manually control leo what i suggest you to do is actually just start off with his, uh, his skill two and then just run around the field for there to be honest use his skill one to extend there but doesn't actually go close range and hit the enemy till you actually have this buff and that basically buy you a bit of time like if you want you can even wait 40 seconds just running around the field till you get off the buff and then start attacking the enemy Normally in PvE stages, I think the time limit is like two minutes or two minutes and a half anyway. So you can definitely afford like 40 seconds to just run around the field because you still have like almost two minutes afterwards to do all the damage. So that's absolutely fine. And that's probably going to be my recommendation if you are to play Leo, where you can actually control him manually. Just run around the field, wait for time to pass by and just wait for all his buff to stack up. If you're actually in peak contest where you can't manually control your character to run around then i would probably suggest use some healers like wendy to actually give you higher uh, uh, hp boost so that somehow you can actually make it alive long enough to actually stack up all of those buffs so that's going to be my suggestion for pvp okay now how good is leo loki personally i think he's possibly i want to say he's probably the strongest character in this game once he has his buff all of his buff up because that this is just crazy amount of buff the one game mode where i can see he is going to shine massively is battle of underground because battle of underground what happens is like two halves the first half i think is only like one minute or so where you are pretty much not doing anything other than just waiting for time to go pass and just hit some random enemies collect a few buff that's going to be perfect for leo for you to maintain this mightiest release get off the buff from there and then in the second half it's just like a dps ra uh, race to see how much damage you can deal out and uh, just look at how much buff he has he has 30 percent crit hit 20, uh 40 percent crit damage then increase attacking speed uh doesn't say how long but increase attacking speed and also uh reduce all oh wait oh it's the effect of this attacking speed just reduce skill cooldown maybe it's just that but yeah like crit rate buff crit damage buff and also you can chain your skill a lot more frequently that is actually going to be insane in any kind of like boss battles where you're just it's like a pure damage race like dps race like Leo Loki is going to be like by far the best character in the game when that happens. So that is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, the only question mark I have for him is going to be his performance in peak contest PvP. Uh, whether he can actually change it indefinitely, his buff status, and also whether he can even survive long enough to actually activate off the buff. I think those two are the biggest concerns I have. Um, leo even though in theory that should be doable because in theory with this cooldown only me at 12 seconds it should be able to do that uh but obviously that's in theory maybe in practice when you're actually facing up against other enemy it's going to say differently but in theory it should work and as a result i am going to rate leo Loki very very highly however like i mentioned at the beginning of the video if you already have luxus and Jalo, both being light versatility characters do you really want to pull for another light character that is a decision you have to make personally i'm gonna skip no matter how good leo is because i just don't need that much elemental coverage but you know that is going to be the tough question uh, that you have when it comes to leo